It is day 32 of my AIP adventure here, and I wanna share with you what I ate for the last few days, as well as go over some of the lifestyle things that you should be doing while doing autoimmune paleo. First, lifestyle. Lifestyle is very important during autoimmune paleo to make sure that you're getting the full benefits of the elimination diet and to make sure that you're not causing any further damage with your, your gut or inflammation or anything else in your body. I know for some people going into autoimmune paleo, you're probably feeling really tired, really like you just can't even function or anything like that. It's more important to get the diet kind of under control first and then start working on the lifestyle pieces, but you're really never gonna fully heal until you actually incorporate the lifestyle pieces as well. Now the things you really have to concentrate on are sleep, stress, and movement. Sleep is necessary because many of the bodily functions that are restorative and things that our body really needs only happen while we're asleep. It used to be thought that our bodies were just dormant when we were asleep, but now scientific research has been coming forward to tell us that so many things are happening while we're asleep, and if we lack sleep or if we skimp on it, we're not getting these things done. And coming from an aspect of autoimmune disease, you really need these things to be done because it's helping restore your body, restore all the functions within your body, and make sure everything's working properly. If you don't have these things working together and properly with autoimmune disease, it's never gonna really fully resolve itself or heal or make you feel better. Sleep can be a little difficult at first sometimes when you're first coming into autoimmune paleo, maybe because your blood sugar is not necessarily regulated the way it's supposed to. So it's a good idea to kind of limit sugars as much as you can, and then maybe have a carb kind of heavy snack or dinner to make sure that you don't have a blood sugar crash in the middle of the night. Usually if you wake up at two to three in the morning, it is either due to blood sugar or because your body is detoxing something. And if you can get your blood sugar under control, then typically this will go away. It may happen periodically, but it shouldn't happen on a regular basis. Some other sleep things that you can do are to make sure that you are limiting electronics right before bed because the blue light emitted from them is actually the same equivalent as like a noon sun. And that really kind of messes your hormones up and does not prepare your body for sleep. One of the things I do, I wear these super sexy blue blocking glasses. Aren't they great? <laughs> I wear these at night as soon as the sun goes down to make sure that my body is starting to prepare for sleep. And I do use my, my computer or read from a electronic Kindle screen. So this is what I wear to make sure that I'm not getting too much blue light. I also wear these even if I'm not doing those things because I can notice the ambient light from light bulbs and other things if I take these off are so blue. So I just wear these and it has really helped with me getting some good sleep and making sure I fall asleep when I, my head hits the pillow. I'm gonna take these off now. <laughs> so in addition, some of the computers have programs that uh, also shift to a redder, yellowish light at night instead of blue, like Mac computers now have night shift as well as iPhones. Um, but you can also do Flux, uh, I believe it's f.lux.com or f.lux or something like that. Just search Google for that and that will also shift the tones at night. And now you have to make sure that your room is completely dark as well. So try to remove all electronic devices. If you can get your like alarm clock out of there with the big blaring blue lights, that's really great. We have an alarm clock, uh, one of those Philips sunrise alarm clocks and the lights actually show up as red. So that's not as bad. But if you can get room darkening shades, if you have lights outside your house, um, just remove all things inside of your room that are going to distract you. Even if you don't see the light, because if maybe you wear a sleep mask or something, it still actually absorbs through your skin. So light is one of those things you just wanna remove from your room. You also wanna make sure your room is a comfortable sleeping temperature. The ideal temperature is somewhere between 62 and 68 degrees. So if you have air conditioning, if you can lower to there or open the windows. In the winter, this is usually a lot easier, but that will actually help you sleep a lot better too and they've done studies where above 70 degrees, I believe, really kind of starts uh, causing you to like gain fat and a lot of the bodily functions don't happen as well. So it's kind of an important thing, especially if you're on the elimination diet portion of AIP to try to get good sleep. I know it's expensive this time of year, especially if you live in like Arizona or California or one of those states where it's really, really hot, 
but it might be worth it just to spend a little bit of extra money to get it in that 62 to 68 range while on the elimination portion just to make sure that you're not uh, causing yourself ill extra problems because of that. Okay, the next lifestyle that we're going to talk about is stress. Now, stress is one of those things, it's great if you're running away from a tiger because your bodily functions will all just focus on getting you away from that tiger. Unfortunately, that actually means that it's taking function away from any restorative processes in your body, your immune function, all of these different things, and that's a problem if it's chronic. So you don't want chronic stress because your body's just in this fight or flight mode all the time, and it can cause things like adrenal fatigue, but also inflammation, leaky gut, all these things that we're trying to prevent and avoid and heal with autoimmune disease. I could talk until I'm blue in the face about stress, but some of the most important things that you can do to help with it are to take some time out for yourself, do a hobby, do like read, or just you know take some time where you're not focusing on something of stress. You can meditate, meditation is great. I did it for an entire year straight and I really felt a difference. These days I do it when I remember, just because it's summer and some of the days we're going up to the mountains all day and I don't want to be stuck in this I have to do it thing, but I do it as much as I can and it really does make a difference. I've really noticed that things like visualization have really been helping me as well. So for example, I will sit in a chair, close my eyes and visualize myself as a happy, healthy, not stressed version of myself doing something that I love and that is just something that makes your whole entire body sing with happiness and it kind of reduces the stress. And then there are other things like massage, watching a funny movie, hanging out with friends, or going for a walk. So going for a walk is a good transition into the movement piece. Movement is a very important piece of AIP as well because without it, your body gets inflammation, a lot of the functions do not work as well, since it's a trend here, <laughs> and um, you just your immune system doesn't work as the way it should or anything like that. However, there is kind of a U curve. So you have either no exercise, which is detrimental and can hurt you, or you can have too much, which is also detrimental and can hurt you, and can cause leaky gut and a various number of other bad things. And I actually personally agree with this because I believe my personal trigger for getting my autoimmune diseases was doing Ironman triathlons. I was working out two to three hours every single day. Triathlon itself took me 14 hours. I had to run into the bathroom while doing it and I had bloody diarrhea. I mean, things did not sound like they were adding up for me <laughs> because eventually, uh, like a month or two after the Ironman, I was still not feeling great and that's when I got diagnosed with my hypothyroidism. So I can vouch for the fact that too much exercise is not good as well as not enough. So you wanna be kind of in that sweet little like up the top of the U-shaped bell curve kind of thing. And that really doesn't require a lot of exercise, um, especially if you're in the beginning stages of an autoimmune disease. This can be just 10, 15 minutes of walking. It can be walking to the end of the street and back if that's all you can handle. Uh, you wanna eventually walk more than that if you can. Like, you know, I walk usually an hour or so a day. However, with this heat, um, I haven't been doing that as much because I usually walk with my dog and he can't handle the heat. I mean, it's just too hot for him. So we've been doing, that. we've been breaking that up into like smaller 10 to 15 minute little bouts of walking throughout the day. As well as I've had to start to ride my bike town to the summer camp for my kids, which is a mile downhill and then a mile uphill. And I've noticed my muscles are very tired from this. So today I said, we're driving because I don't want to push myself too far into this place where I'm not recovering and continuing to work out like I used to. That's the important thing. You may be used to riding 30 miles a day or running five miles a day or something like that. That's fine if you, can, if you wanna continue that. Just make sure that you are recovering in between. That is the most important part. You cannot continue to keep your body going and in some sort of like goal of, achievement or training for a race or something like that without that recovery or else you're gonna perpetuate your autoimmune disease and your symptoms. I also started doing gentle restorative yoga again this week. I had stopped for a while, just too busy, too many things going on in my life and my hamstring had been so hurt that I just didn't want to stretch it. But I started doing that again this week. And something like yoga or Pilates, hiking, swimming, biking, all of these things are great activities and it doesn't have to be something where you're like dressed up in an athletic outfit and have to like 
eat power bars and things like that, it can be a very gentle kind of movement. So don't get stuck in this whole notion that you have to do like a marathon to be healthy. You do not. And walking is a perfectly great and awesome exercise to do. In fact, it's considered to be the ideal exercise when dealing with an autoimmune disease. So if you're like me, coming from a background of marathons, Ironman, all of these things where you feel like you have to do a lot of workouts, then give yourself permission to just walk for a while and it is perfectly okay. Do not feel ashamed. Do not feel like you are lacking of anything. It is perfectly good and you're gonna get in good shape and make yourself even healthier because of it. Okay, so on to what I ate this week. Thursday morning for breakfast, I had another note meal, but this one was one that was based on some spaghetti squash with cinnamon and raisins and flaked coconut on top. And it was really good. I liked that one. For lunch that day, I had leftover chicken, mashed cauliflower, and gravy with some black olives and arugula. And then for dinner that night, I had the Kahlua pork from Nam Nam Paleo, uh, mixed in with some canned pineapple over a bed of my coconut cauliflower rice that I used coconut oil instead of butter or ghee, um, if you look at the recipe for mine, uh, with also mixed greens and some guacamole. It was guacamole, but it just doesn't have any of the cumin or anything in it. It was just mashed guac or mashed avocado with sea salt, lime juice, a little apple cider vinegar, and some garlic powder and cilantro and mixed together. And then I also had some uh, baked plantains with that as well. The ones that are baked at 425 in the oven for about 20 minutes with avocado oil and salt on top of them. For breakfast on Thursday, I had leftover of that spaghetti squash note meal with an apple sage sausage that I had made during batch cooking prior to AIP. For lunch, I had leftover of the pork and pineapple and all that kind of stuff. For dinner last night, I had the All American Burgers from the Healing Kitchen with some sliced dried figs, a little bit of avocado mayo, some arugula, a piece of sugar-free U.S. Wellness bacon, and some broccoli that had been sauteed in a pan with coconut aminos and salt. And then for breakfast this morning, I had leftover chicken and mashed cauliflower and gravy just because we had some of it left over. Didn't want to have to think about breakfast. This was a hard morning because I really wanted the waffles and eggs that my family were having again. Some days I don't have a problem with it, but this morning I had a problem with it. And then for lunch, I'm gonna have again that leftover pork and guacamole kind of deal because I still have some of that left. And dinner tonight, I'm gonna be making the pineapple and ham pizza from the Healing Kitchen because it's our movie picnic night. And that one we really liked a lot. 